How's it going guys? Templar here, and if you couldn't tell from that little intro, today we're going to be talking about the Palace Guard. Oh, Palace Guards, where do I begin? They're a four-star heroic air unit. I'm going to lock them right here on the tree. They have four armor upgrades. The armor reinforcement, which increases their piercing defense. Shield bash, which increases their blunt damage. Layered armor, which increases their slashing defense. And once you max those three out, you can get Archer's Insights, which increases their ranged weapon resistance by 4%. You can do that five times, so it's pretty good to get. Palette Scars, Vengeance Bonuses. What you want to do is pick one of the two trees. Both trees do different things. The top tree is an all offense tree, and it'll make them really excel in slaughtering lower tier units. See, they can get uh, two units with a single strike, they get shield bash, increase all damage, you know, they can stun enemy heroes, they're pretty good. If you go down the bottom tree, it's basically like they draw a line in the sand. It's very hard to pass through them, and when you do, you're probably going to be lacking a few units. Yeah, so they get a lot of defense. They get shield formation. I didn't really like shield formation that much on them. It's definitely not as good as the men at arms shield formation, but it's passable. Yeah, that's the palace guards right there. We'll get into combat and talk about them a little bit more. So the palace guard, uh, these little clips here, are using the defensive tree for them. As you can see, they're good for charging. The charge isn't the greatest, but it is passable. It's a very slow charge, so you definitely don't want your enemy to be able to run in like an open field. Like the staircase right here is a perfect example. They can't really get away, and while charging, I'm able to kind of take the blunt of the enemy's defense while my ally kind of comes up behind me. And that's what I think the Palace Guard really excel at, is kind of supporting other troops. Their AI is not very good, as you can see here. They kind of walk around. They don't really do much. They don't really hit super hard in the defensive mode, but at the same time they can absorb a lot of archer fire because you can get, uh, I don't know, is it 60% resistance to arrows or something once you have all the honor trees and the, uh, the honor tree upgrades and the veteran seat upgrades. But at the same time, just because they're not the best at offense and they're kind of derpy, the palace guard can assault siege tower still as you can see here. You kind of just send them in first, be meat shields for everybody else, and since they're so tanky, your enemy is forced to kind of kill them, or they can't do much. But see, look at it, they just, uh, their greatest weakness, once again, is their AI, or how they're programmed. They kind of just stand there, as you can see, like, the first four will fight, and then the rest of them behind them will just stand until the line kind of falls. But since the defensive tree of the palace guard is so strong, you're kind of able to just let them be on attack command and do their thing. As long as you're watching their health bars, if you start losing them, go kind of assist them. But at the same time, you can kind of leave them alone for the most part. They won't die. And yeah, the upsides to the palace guard would be they're pretty cheap for a heroic unit. I think when they die, their kits are like in the high 3000s, like 3009. Not over 4k compared to say like the men at arms which i do prefer over the palace guard the men at arms gets you know like a thousand bronze more and yeah palace guard you support your team and you let your team do most of the killing and here's another example of the palace guard defensive treatments again like when i said you draw the line in the, in the sand you basically do the enemy team rushed our entire base. My team wasn't really responding on this map. It was just me against the world and two other heroes. Palace Guard, they're getting blown apart. They're taking spear charges. I'm just trying to support them the best I can, and they're still, they're still holding. I think they're down to the last five, but we still hold that damn line. So the off offensive tree is definitely effective. If you want a super meaty unit that's not going to put out a lot of kills, go the offensive tree. Support it with maybe a, an all longsword. I know they're the flavor of the month right now, but the heal all longsword would definitely go a long way for these guys. Also maybe support them with, like, I'm using a Gachi so I can kind of get the killing potential out while they're kind of blocking the shots for me. 
yeah, we'll go over to the offensive version of them and we'll see how different they are. It's not too different, but there's a difference. So Palace Guard Offensive Tree. You can charge in with them and expect to put some DPS up on the board. The multi-attack, they cut down a lot of units after they charge, no problem. They still do suffer from the same AI problems, so a lot of the time they'll just kind of stand there, or if they're stuck in a group, they won't, they won't mass attack. But they're still pretty effective. On the plus side with the offensive tree, you got the stun on heroes when they attack. So, what you can do is charge them into the enemy heroes, they'll throw a little micro stun up and you're able to finish the heroes off with your hero. So they're definitely more of a support troop than a offensive troop I find. You can still rush up towers and stuff with them, but I wouldn't let them do that on the offensive side. I kind of pray that my teammate has a little bit of fodder to go in front of them. Right here is a good example of how their AIs worked. And it shows how the downside to them, clearly. So we slaughter the troops, no problem. Nothing they can't handle, I die. But as you can see, they kind of just stand there afterwards. Kind of chomp a little bit, but they don't do anything crazy. Yeah, right here, we just charge archers with them. Just like the men-at-arms can do, the palace guard can do them a little bit worse. Their charge is a lot worse than a few, like than the men at arms charge. A few other units charge very slow. They also move very slow, which is another downside to them. If I had to pick one of the units, either men at arms or palace guards, since they're kind of in the same era, I would go men at arms. Even if they're more expensive, they definitely put more on the board. Palace guard cannot achieve as much as the men at arms. If you had to pick a tree, I'd definitely go the defensive tree on the palace guard just because they can tank forever on a point as long as your team shows up in the next minute or so. And if I had to rate these guys on whether you should get them or not, I'd say like a 7 out of 10. They're definitely all right for a heroic air unit. They're not the best, they're not the worst. And that's everything for the palace guard. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll try to get another guide out to you in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Templar out.